Welcome back. Home prices rose for a second consecutive month in Canada's largest real estate market, Toronto. The benchmark selling price rose 0.2% in March compared with February. The number of sales fell slightly from February and new listings declined by 3%. All of this, of course, comes from the Toronto Regional Real Estate Board. It says price growth is expected to increase in the spring. And that, of course, is a traditionally active season for the home sales market. Let's bring in an expert. He's Jason Mercer, Chief Market Strategist at TREB, the Toronto Regional Real Estate Board. Thank you, first of all, for coming in. No problem. Good morning. Uh, second consecutive month of price gains. Tell us uh, what else we saw during the quarter. Yeah, I mean, I, I think if you look at the, the first quarter as a whole, it's an improvement over what we saw uh, in, in 2023. And I think, you know, Part of it is that you know households, even in this higher interest rate environment, have come to terms um, with you know higher principal and interest payments on, on a monthly basis. And you know whether that's you know looking at a different type of home or a different part of the GTA or what have you to, to mitigate mm -hmm. uh, some of those increased costs. And, and so we have started to see you know a moderate uptick uh, in the demand for ownership housing. I think that's only going to continue as you move into the second half of this year with the anticipated rate cuts, uh, perhaps as early as July. It uh, sounds like people uh, settling for smaller homes uh, more distant from the city centre. Is that correct? Yeah, I mean, certainly you see that, you know, anytime you see a, a, a real sort of shock to the system. We saw that back uh, when the OSFI stress test was uh, was changed and, and obviously made more strict. Um, same type of thing as you see interest rates uh, move upwards aggressively like we saw over the last couple of years. What, do, what have we seen in the condominium market where we continue to see cranes all over the city and in, in suburban areas as well? I was in Hamilton on on the weekend, there are lots of new condo buildings in that uh, in that uh, part of southern Ontario. Yeah, so when we did our latest round of consumer polling at the end of last year, one of the things we found is that you know households that are renting right now, a lot of them are saying, about a third of them, in fact, are, are saying, look, if we see our rent go up even by another dollar, we're going to be looking really closely at, uh, at purchasing a home. Um, and the condominium apartment segment is one of the key entry points into into home ownership. So you know, again, thinking about lower interest rates to come in the second half of this year and even more so in 2025, that could start to see, you know, th those renters start to shift into the into the ownership market. And so that would obviously, you know, put upward pressure on, on condominium apartment prices in the near future. So how close are we now in early April to the so-called spring uh, spring season? Well, I think certainly, you know, May is normally the peak um, of the of the spring market. So a month or so out. Uh, it'll be interesting to see, though, if we see a little bit stronger of a summer than, than we'd be normally uh, um, accustomed to if we start to see uh, the Bank of Canada pull the trigger on, on rate cuts. Uh, how would the market respond? Uh, we noted earlier in another conversation on this topic that when the Bank of Canada in early uh, 2023 paused and there was a period of time when the rates stayed steady, that was still when the Bank of Canada was on its way up with rates. We, we saw a real uh, reigniting of the housing market. Yeah, I mean, our sense, again, from, from polling and also talking you know, to our brokers throughout the GTA is that there's a lot of buyers on the sidelines right now that are really poised to jump back into the market. And so that could be the catalyst. I mean, I think you, know, you mentioned last year a bit of a false start to the market when the expectation was perhaps we were going to see rate cuts towards the end of last year. Obviously, that didn't materialize. So I think there are a lot of people now are saying, look, we need to see some tangible evidence. But once that evidence materializes, we're going to start moving back into the market in bigger numbers. A federal budget is coming in about a week and a half or so. What would uh, Treb like to see there? And I think it's safe to say that housing will be a, will be a focus. Yeah, I mean, we saw an announcement yesterday. And, and I, I think, you know, over the last number of years that we've been talking about housing on this show, we've moved from, you know, the debate around whether, you know, it's a demand side policy, uh, uh, you know, picture or a supply side policy picture. I think, you know, all levels of government are now aligned with the notion that we need to see more housing stock come online, especially with the record levels of immigration. I think now, you know, where the debate lies is exactly how those those supply strategies, those policies are, are, are going to align. And so, you know, obviously over the next uh, days and weeks, I think there's going to be a lot of dialogue between different levels of government based on, you know, the federal announcement that we saw uh, um, yesterday and, and certainly, you know, announcements in, in previous weeks, both from the province and the city. Toronto, of course, has a relatively new mayor and, and a, a council that is in the main aligned uh, with her. How has she done so far? How's Toronto City Council done uh, so far during uh, Olivia Chow's administration on this file? Well, I think when you're thinking about, you know, 
getting a, a, a greater number of homes online in the aggregate, but also a greater diversity of home types in different neighborhoods throughout the city. I think that that remains their focus. And you know, if you look back to research that Treb had done uh, a couple of years ago in conjunction with a firm called Urban Strategies, we looked at what the art of the possible was for infill development, both in existing neighborhoods, you know, and throughout uh, uh, new home developments in the GTA. And a lot of it looks really great. And so I, th I think you know, as we move forward, it's a bit of a public education uh, requirement as well for people to understand sort of what the art of the possible is for you know new types of supply coming online.